thank you everyone for coming. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm Max Lynch. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ionic. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about building multi-platform apps with Ionic and AWS Amplify. So really quickly about me, um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ionic. We're the company behind the open source Ionic framework, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I'll do a quick intro in a little bit. Um, I like to think of myself as a little bit of an open sourcer. So I, I do tend to write code from time to time. Um, I had some of the early commits in Ionic Framework, probably most of which are not in there anymore, which is probably for the best. Uh, and I built one of our new open source projects that I'm not going to be talking about today, Capacitor, which is a, essentially a native app runtime. So you can run web apps on iOS, Android, Electron, and the web. Uh, I live in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm a Midwesterner. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm just at Max Lynch on Twitter. So uh, we have an hour today. And that means we need to fill all this time with some live coding, which is what we're going to be doing most of the time. Um, but we're going to start with a quick intro to Ionic, AWS Amplify, and how they play together. Uh, then we're, we're super excited to announce a new product we've been working on that should make building apps with Ionic and using Amplify even easier. Uh, then we're going to cross our fingers and, and move into live coding and hope that that isn't a complete disaster, which it shouldn't be. Uh, and then we'll leave with some last uh, thoughts. So if you aren't familiar with Ionic, um, Ionic is essentially an open source UI kit uh, targeted at helping web developers build mobile apps. So if you're the kind of developer who knows HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, you love the browser environment, you feel really, really comfortable there, Ionic has a set of UI controls to help you take those skills to iOS, Android for the app stores, uh, and, and recently Electron and the web as a progressive web app, kind of with one shared code base. Uh, it's all MIT licensed, and um, we have UI controls and development tools to help you build the apps. Uh, because every good app needs to integrate with native SDKs and, and sensors and things like that, we have over 100 uh, sensors or SDK integrations that you can plug into your app in a way that you can kind of treat them as a uh, abstraction across multiple platforms. So you don't need to worry about how the camera works on iOS versus Android. You just use the camera API and, and get back to building your app. Uh, we are a real company, so we also have some commercial offerings. Our main thing is we help enterprise teams uh, that are trying to build mobile proficiencies kind of use Ionic to become uh, uh, really great mobile engineering team. So we have code for connecting with lots of different uh, enterprise systems, uh, enterprise native SDKs, uh, support and advisory and things like that. And then we also have some mobile DevOps tools so you can uh, do awesome things like push app updates remotely without having to go through the app store um, and add uh, native iOS and Android builds to your CI process. Um, so that's some of what we do. Uh, Ionic is pretty widely used these days. We've got um, consumer startups up through Fortune 1000 enterprises that use Ionic. And those types of apps that they're building uh, run the gamut from the typical consumer app that you see in the App Store. But increasingly, and something that I'm really excited about, a lot of bigger companies are starting to use Ionic to build lots of internal apps. So we've kind of noticed this trend where no matter what kind of company you are, you have to become a software company, even if that wasn't something that you did before. And so Ionic is helping these teams become, uh, add mobile development to their capabilities and, and build internal apps for a lot of different use cases that they might have, like managing inventory, tracking maintenance, contractors, things like that. Uh, so we've got about uh, 300,000 monthly active developers that are getting their hands dirty and building apps using the CLI tools. Uh, lots of development happening. Uh, the community is probably the best part, the thing I love the most about uh, Ionic. Uh, we've got over 100 meetups, very active community, and really thankful to have brands like Dow Jones, Market Watch, Amtrak, AAA, and GE using Ionic. So uh, we really focus uh, on the front end, which is why we have uh, had such a nice partnership with Amazon on the back end in the AWS team. Uh, because with Ionic and AWS Amplify, you can get a cross-platform app, iOS and Android, Windows, the web, et cetera, with a production-ready, enterprise-ready backend in 
you know, a very short amount of time. Uh, so uh, you probably have heard about Amplify a million times, and uh, I, I am not quite up to date on the new uh, Amplify console announcements that came out. But uh, to me, um, I think it's helpful to just kind of describe what I think of as Amplify as someone who's not part of the AWS team, kind of an outside perspective. So to me, uh, Amplify is really uh, the full power of AWS, but really focused on front-end developers. Uh, so if you are a developer that feels more comfortable uh, using CLI tools or, or working on the front-end and writing JavaScript, you can build and manage uh, powerful AWS resources from a more structured kind of safe front-end experience in a way that you're not going into the console and twiddling things and worrying about breaking stuff, uh, but you're using a well-defined uh, tool that's uh, orchestrating a bunch of stuff on the back end for you. Uh, one of the really great things that you get with the tool is you get a unified library for accessing all the different AWS services, but you treat it as kind of like a high level thing. Like I have authentication and I'm not worried about how that's powered by Cognito or all the details, I just use the authentication API or I use the storage API. And so the library that comes with Amplify is really, really nice and it simplifies a lot of the details underneath. Uh, there's tons of integrations with different frameworks, like Ionic. There's an official Ionic integration, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and those, some of those integrations have pre-made components for authentication, photo galleries, image uploads, things like that. So there is a, uh, thanks to the Amplify team, there's an official Ionic integration for AWS Amplify. Uh, so if you go to the docs, and you go to the JavaScript section and go to Ionic, you can see a bunch of documentation on using Ionic with Amplify. So um, I wanna thank the Amplify team for putting in the work to build a bunch of pre-made components that actually use Ionic controls underneath. So for example, um, there's a snippet here, but it's a, uh, a pre-made authentication form. We're gonna use it in the demo, and it comes with uh, Ionic controls. It uses Ionic controls under the hood. So, uh, that's really great and, and kind of gets you up and running with uh, a nice UI really, really quickly. So definitely check that out. We're going to be using that today. Um, and then if you followed on Twitter, uh, we were teasing a new product that we've been working on uh, that should help really improve and streamline the process of building apps. Whether you're using Ionic, whether you're new to Ionic, um, we've been working on a uh, essentially a new tool to kind of bring the whole development experience into one place and make it super, super easy uh, to get building. So today I'm super excited to announce um, a new product called Ionic Studio, which is essentially a IDE for Ionic. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'm going to be using it today, so you'll get a taste of, of it. Uh, but you can go to ionicframework.com slash studio uh, and check, check it out. We're going to be kind of slowly rolling it out, so it's still a little bit early. It's the first time we've, we've announced it, but I'm, I'm really, really excited about this. We've been working hard on this, um, and uh, it, it's got some really, really awesome features that uh, I personally have been wanting. So uh, for one, um, you know, a big part of any IDE is writing code. You need to be able to write code easily. It needs to be fully featured, et cetera. So uh, we've adopted portions of VS Code for you know, rich TypeScript integration, um, template, autocomplete, template editing. But we've also added a number of really interesting things. One of those is a visual designer for uh, building UI in a way that you can switch back and forth seamlessly from code to design. So it works off of your actual template files, and you can decide if you want to uh, stay in code or switch to design mode and, and back and forth. Um, with that, one of my favorite features and one of the features that we've gotten a lot of really great feedback on is every single Ionic control is in this tool. So you don't have to go switch back and forth to the documentation. Uh, if you want to use a button, if you want to use a list, um, something like that, you can just go to the library and drag it in. And that drag and drop works both in code mode and design mode. So if you just want to drag a snippet in, it's the same as going to the designer and dragging in uh, the actual code. Uh, and then finally, one of the big reasons that I'm here today is there's actually one-click Amplify integration in this tool. So the whole goal is that you can go from zero to you know, fully functioning app with a production-ready backend really, really quickly with Ionic and Amplify is, is something that I'm excited about to show off today. 
So um, we are going to be building out uh, just a small portion of a real-world app. Um, we've got a, a templated HR platform app. And this is something that you might have at your company if you're a, you know, a big enough size where you have enough employees that it makes sense to have like a portal or HR portal. So uh, this app is basically going to list uh, coworkers and employees, um, lets you send messages between people in HR, uh, uh, file expense reports, track time off, um, things like that. So it, it's not a real app, we're just using it as a demo. Uh, so this app's gonna be powered by Amplify for um, storage authentication, uh, the API stuff, and then we're going to do, at the very end, show the hosting feature. Uh, and so that is going to be powered by a bunch of Amazon services underneath the hood. And you'll, you'll notice that as we build it out, you won't really have to even think about any of those. Uh, and if you're a front-end developer like me, uh, you probably don't understand how to use most of those services anyways, so this is um, uh, an easier way to consume them. Uh, and this app will in theory, run on iOS and Android and web, so kind of one app with uh, a shared code base. Okay, so this is the part where I'm gonna switch over to the demo. Cool. Apologies if it's, if it's hard to read. Um, let's see. Let's give that a refresh. Okay, so um, this is Ionic Studio. It's very similar to uh, most IDEs you may have used, so, so hopefully no surprises there. Uh, what we're going to do is start a new project, and we're going to build off kind of the template. Uh, we're going to build this HR platform app. Um, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to be doing some live coding, uh, but I'm not going to be explaining everything. And, and uh, in my opinion, the point of live coding is not to be this uh, kind of detailed tr training thing, but really to get you inspired to try something like this on your own. So uh, hopefully by showing you how quickly something can get built, uh, you can be inspired to do that yourself. So with that, I will apologize in advance because I'm not going to be able to explain everything. I'm going to skip over some things. I'm probably not doing some things right. Uh, it, whatever, it's fine. Uh, okay, so let's start this project here. We're going to call it My HR. And we're going to use the tabs starter. Um, and I'll see if I can get this bumped up at all, because I know it's going to be really hard to read. If I could scale this. I don't want to destroy it. OK. Is that better? That's better. OK, so this is going and installing and creating our project and generating uh, the different pages and things that we're going to use in our project. So um, we can see that we've got uh, a number of pages up here. And this is, OK, everything installed. So uh, let's just take a look at what the default project looks like. And hopefully the screen size hasn't ruined all my plans, but we'll see how this goes. Um, okay, so every Ionic app has, uh, basically there's, there's two main kind of UI styles that we see in, an, in Ionic apps, tabs and side menu. Uh, so for this app, if we go look at our design that our designer so thoughtfully put together, uh, we see that we're going to be building kind of a basic tabbed-based app. And this has multiple tabs, a people tab, messages tab, um, expenses tab, time off tab, pretty basic kind of data-driven tabbed-based app. So uh, in our demo here, whoops, uh, we can see that we have a basic tab starter out of the box with three different pages. So you'll notice a few things look different from the actual design that we're going after. For one, the colors are, are different. So we're using this red color here. Um, and there's obviously more pages. So uh, what we're going to do is just do a quick kind of theme match. Uh, and, and I just want to kind of match the main colors of the app that we're building. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and find this red color here and just copy the hex code. And one of the really awesome features that Studio has is a built-in theme tool. So the way Ionic works from a theming standpoint is we give you a set of high-level brand variables, essentially. 
And you can just change one of those values and it updates everywhere. So uh, the primary color, for example, is kind of the main one for buttons and, and highlights. And so if we just change this to our red color quick, which I just mess that up. If we paste this in and save it, now our app should uh, rebuild. Uh, and now we'll have this red color as the highlight. <clears throat> Let's give that a second. OK, so now we've got kind of what looks closer to the app. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing here is the, is the uh, toolbar and the tab bar are white. So uh, one of the things about the new version of Ionic is that every theme color is uh, available as a, uh, a CSS variable. So we, we kind of have this public API of themes and colors that you can modify for each component. And they're CSS variables. So if you're not familiar with CSS variables, they're technically called CSS properties. Uh, but they basically are dynamic values that your CSS uh, will respond to. So if we change one of those, in theory, the whole app will update, and we didn't have to do anything. And we didn't need a preprocessor like SAS. It just works. Uh, so there's two variables here I'm going to uh, use here. And I'll, I, you'll see me copying some snippets here, just to avoid disaster. Um, but if we give this a sec to compile and update, we'll notice that the tab bar and the header bar are white. It's a small detail, and you probably can't even tell on that screen, but the details matter. Um, <clears throat> OK, so we've got kind of the theme set. We don't really need to do a whole lot more there. Um, we are going to go and prototype out some of the layouts. So I like to do this if I'm building like a data-driven app. Generally, you can do a lot on the front end without you ever having to think about the back end. Just kind of lay out the basic, um, the basic kind of containers, the items you're going to repeat when you get some data from the server, and things like that. So, uh, so actually, before I do that, we're going to go and just create all the pages that we're going to use because this app comes with a few pages that we don't need. So we don't need the home page, we don't need the contact page. We don't need the about page. So uh, we have four other pages that we are going to use. So inside Studio, you can go and create new pages. Um, just hit plus, and <clears throat> we should get a prompt to create a page. So we have a, a people page. We can see that here. People, messages, expenses, and time off. So I'm just going to go generate a few of these. Expenses. I don't think I'm going to be able to bump it up, sorry. Time off. OK, so we have messages, expenses, time off, and then settings page is the last page. OK, and uh, hopefully this is going to be a little bit easier in the future. But for now, um, we just have to update the router so that all the pages are linked properly. So I've got this already done. <laughs> and. If you've ever used Angular, I'm basic, basically just linking up the pages that I created to the router. That is on the roadmap. Um, unfortunately, not quite done yet. So, But once we update all these, we should have our new tabs ready to go. <coughs> OK. All right, cool. So we've got all our tabs here now loading. We've got a people tab, messages tab, expenses, time off, and settings. Uh, great. So the last thing that I want to do before we move into the back end side is prototype out the uh, list that we're going to populate with the people in the database. So I'm really just going to focus on the people tab for the actual database side. Uh, so like I said, one of the cool things about Studio is you have um, both uh, code mode and design mode when you're, when you're modifying templates. So I can switch back from the, uh, from the code, the actual template HTML for my template, to a design mode, and it's working out the same source. So uh, in the design, we have a, a list of people. And so I'm probably going to need to have a list component. So over here on the left, if I search list, I've got the Ionic list component. I can drag it right in. <clears throat> and when I'm building a uh, building kind of a repeated items, like kind of a dynamic list, you really only need one 
you really only need one item. So I'm going to go and delete these. <clears throat> All right. So now we've got our item here. And if I check the mock-up one more time, I can see there's an avatar and then a uh, name and then a job title. So uh, thankfully, we've got all those components here. We've got an avatar. And I can drag this over. And I could drag it in the left or the right slot. I'm going to put it in the left slot. <clears throat> and then just add a paragraph component, which will be the, uh, <clears throat> the name of the person or the job title of the person. OK, so some reason that's not loading, but just assume that's loading. <laughs> Um, so one of the really cool features about Studio that, that I personally love is you notice on the right side, uh, every single property that this component that I have selected supports is available in the tool. And the reason why we've been able to do that is because uh, we use TypeScript for everything. So every single component that we have has full type information. It's always up to date uh, for what the component supports. Um, and so we can go in here and modify pretty much everything. And, and if you've used Ionic before, you know that you kind of have this back and forth, switching back and forth between the documentation um, and what you're working on. And so hopefully this will cut down on some of that. I'm just going to remove the padding on the content just to make it a little nicer. Uh, and we've got basically our um, prototype layout that we're going to end up populating with some data. So there it is. Updated. Uh, cool. So, all right, now, now it's time to get a little bit wild. Let's open up uh, the settings page for our project. And one of the things that we uh, spent a lot of time on is uh, adding integrations to the tool. Um, so we worked, have been working with the Amplify team over the last year or so, trying to find a way that uh, Amplify would make sense in a tool like this, because we want to make it possible for you to go from zero, again, to a fully functioning app. And the way that we can do that is working with the, you know, the best cloud providers out there, like AWS. So uh, we have added an official Amplify integration into the tool. And to add it, you just go to Project Integrations and install it. And this is going to go and install into our project the dependencies that we need. And now we have available a uh, Amplify specific section of the app over here on the left. Um, so every Amplify project has to be initialized. And the initialization process basically goes and provisions a bunch of resources on the server, et cetera. So we're just going to run that right now. And this is going to open up a terminal. Soon this will be embedded in the tool, but we're not there yet. Uh, asks you to select your default code editor um, and, and then go through and select the type of app that you're building. So we're building a JavaScript app. We're using Ionic. The source directory is in the source folder. Um, our build files are in www. That's our build command. That's our start command. And then we can pick a AWS profile. And this is going to go and initialize our project in AWS. So we'll see this go through and create um, a number of AWS resources in a way that we didn't really have to you know, do any of this ourselves. So I'm already seeing here creating some IAM roles, S3 buckets, CloudFormation stacks, all for me running in init command. Um, so that, let's just take a look back at the dashboard while it's running. OK, that finished. Um, so one of the really important things with the Amplify tool is tracking the status of your project. So the way Amplify works is you queue up changes to your project on the, on, the, on the local side, and then you push those changes essentially into production or uh, whatever environment you're using on the server. So right now, we see our status. We have uh, nothing queued up. Uh, let's go ahead and change that quick. Let's add authentication because we're going to let someone log in and use the app. Um, that one's pretty simple. It just asked us to accept the default configuration. And then let's go and add analytics quick. We're going to say, yes, we want to allow guests to send events. All right, so if we go back to the tool, we can see here that we have um, 
two operations queued up. We've got an authentication operation queued up and then an analytics operation queued up. So I'm going to hit push because that takes a bit of time. Um, continue. And this is going to go provision a ton of stuff on the back end for me. OK, so while that's running, we, need, we just need to go and add the dependencies for Amplify into our actual source code. So um, again, this isn't quite automated yet, but, but it will be in the future. So I'm just going to copy and paste some things here. So we have to import the Amplify services from Amplify Angular into our project. We are going to make one small change to the index file. All of this is in the documentation, so I'm not doing anything that isn't specified already. I'm going to import Amplify into our main.ts. So this, uh, the way Amplify works, and I'll show you once this push command finishes is you have this AWS exports file that's generated that contains all the different configuration keys and client IDs needed for every individual AWS service. Uh, and then the way that you initialize it is in here, uh, you import that file and essentially call amplify configure with that file. And I'll show you once that's generated. So one thing we have to do to Rename the uh, um, rename the exports file to turn it into a TypeScript file, and then just import some types quick. All right, that should be it. I'm just going to remove this. Okay, let's take a look at that push operation. Okay, we're still going. We're still going. I was hoping this internet would be a little faster than my my hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> Turns out I had really good hotel Wi-Fi. OK, so we can't find the module yet because this doesn't work. It hasn't been created yet. Um, <clears throat> shouldn't be long now. OK, but while, while we're waiting for this to finish, um, we can kind of go through this log here. So, so adding analytics and adding authentication, you can see all the things that Amplify did for us. So we created a bunch of um, CloudFormation stacks, Lambda functions, authentication for those functions, Cognito, IAM policies, uh, Lambda, more Lambda functions, um, identity pools, things like that. So uh, if you've ever done, done this stuff by hand before, uh, you can imagine how much time this, this saves you. So even if you're like, you know, a, a experienced AWS backend engineer, uh, I would find it hard to not want to use this tool. <laughs> OK, so that generated our exports file. I just need to rename it quick. OK, so if we take a look at this exports file, we can see uh, we, have, uh, we have some keys that have been auto-generated for us. Uh, we've got, um, there we go, I'll make it a little bigger. Uh, we've got like our Cognito identity pool ID, our Cognito region, AWS user pool ID, so a whole bunch of keys that we don't have to think about. Uh, the Amplify tooling manages all that for us. Um, so this should have compiled. <clears throat> cool. So the library is imported. It's connected. It's configured. Everything's working. Uh, I breathe a sigh of relief. OK. So uh, now I want to move into adding one of the things that every single front-end developer dreads, which is authentication in a login form. It's one of those things that just has to work. You don't get any credit for it. Uh, people only notice if it doesn't work. But it's a lot of work to do yourself. Uh, and this is one of my favorite features of Amplify. And, and this is where um, our official integration with Amplify in the tool comes, comes into play. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is generate a new login page. And that login page is going to present a form to let people log in, sign up, reset their password. Uh, that login page is then going to uh, navigate to the rest of this app here, this tabs UI, um, when the user's logged in, uh, and be able to force the user to log out. 
So let's go ahead and generate a new page. So I'm going to go add a page like I did before. This is going to build out and scaffold out for me a default login page. Um, now, what I need to go ahead and do now is tie this um, page up to the rest of the app. And this is more routing stuff that uh, we hope to make easier in the future, but we just need to move the tabs page one level deeper so that you can, you can uh, navigate to it rather than it being the default, um, the default route. So apologies for all the copy and pasting, but better safe than sorry. Okay, and then we're gonna update the tabs to point to the new, new routes, update the tabs router. Okay, and then the other thing I'm doing here is uh, I've created a user service. So Amplify comes with a uh, default uh, Angular service that you import into your project. And this service lets you access authentication, storage, APIs, uh, things like that. But I always find that when I'm building an app, I like to have, especially with Angular, I like to have a user service that kind of abstracts away a lot of the user stuff that I'm gonna do. So let's go up and generate a new service here. I'm gonna call this user. Uh, this is gonna generate out a injectable uh, Angular service that I can use to pass around all my different pages. Uh, so by default, it doesn't do a whole lot, uh, but I've got one ready to go here that I'll walk through. Basically imports the Amplify service and then listens for authentication state changes. So if authentication state changes, we update our internal user, we emit our own event, and if the user logs out, we, we navigate them back to the root of the app. So it doesn't do a whole lot. There's also a function to log out um, and get the internal user. And you can see here kind of an example of what the service, the Amplify service makes really easy. Doing a log out, I just call amplify service.auth, and then I sign out. Okay. I think I did everything. The one last thing I'm gonna do is update the settings page to show a button that lets you log out and then shows you your username. So we can actually make sure the authentication is working. Just gonna save that quick. Okay. So let's let the app rebuild and make sure that's all working. Okay, so I, one last step that I need to do. Um, so. In Studio, what we've done is we've integrated a number of the official Amplify components. So if I open up the login page and I look in the component set, <clears throat> I can see three uh, pre-made components down here. Uh, the first one is the Amplify Authenticator. So this is a pre-made authentication form for Amplify. It is a login page, a sign-up page, reset password page, kind of all in one. Uh, the next one is in a photo picker, so I could pick a photo from the, the, the device and upload it to S3 and access it from there. And then finally, the bottom one, it takes an S3 bucket and generates a gallery of images. So we're gonna use the authenticator and just drag this in here. Uh, it doesn't render yet in the designer. We, we don't render custom controls yet, but um, that's all I needed to do. So if I go to the markup, I can see I've got uh, my Amplify authenticator and I'm using the Ionic Framework version of the Authenticator. So it looks like our app built, and that's good. So um, we've got our login form here. Let's go and create an account. Um, so I'm just gonna go and enter some data here. And if you've built these kinds of forms yourself, uh, you know that even just getting to this point is a lot of work. And this, it's got two factors, so it's sending me a code right now. I'm gonna check my email. Okay, got my code. Confirm the code. That's not the right code. Oh. Okay, then I log in again. Cool, 
So uh, with that, we have a login form that took all of you know, a minute plus or minus my copy and pasting, but it uh, took only a few minutes and we had all those features, sign in, sign up, reset password, two-factor auth with pin, and you can customize it even more and, and you know, enforce password restrictions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and now my app has a user session. If I look in the settings tab, I can see that I'm logged in. So I've got my username there. And if I click log out, I go back to the login page. So uh, this is awesome because, like I said, I hate building authentication flows. And Amplify makes it super easy. And the Amplify components make it even easier. So I uh, really, really, really love that feature. OK, so authentication is one of those things that it's just you got to have it, but it's not super exciting. So what is more exciting is uh, database operations and tables and APIs and things like that. And this is where Amplify really, really shines. Uh, so we're going to go and walk through creating um, an API and have it actually generate database tables for us, uh, create new database table entries, and or create new rows in the, data, in the table, and then load those back. So if we go to the Amplify tab, we can go and add a new API. And so it's going to ask us what kind of API we want to create. Um, we're going to do GraphQL. Give it an, a name, a cognito user pool. And then we're going to basically edit our GraphQL schema. So um, the way that this works is you basically write up a simple GraphQL schema, laying out the different types of objects in your app. And then when we push it to the server, um, the code gen feature is going to go and generate a ton of different code, a ton of uh, uh, different operations for us in a simple Angular service that we can import. So we can just basically call create, re, uh, create load, uh, update, delete, et cetera. And uh, we don't have to worry about GraphQL at all. So the, the really nice thing about this is it's based on what is becoming kind of a de facto standard, which is GraphQL. But we don't have to really worry about GraphQL underneath. Uh, so I'm going to show you how that works right here. Uh, so in our app, we've got a few different models. So we've got people, messages, expenses, um, time off requests. So I'm going to go make a person model here. And a person has a name. They've got a job title. And maybe they, maybe they have a profile image. Um, another type might be uh, a message. And that's going to have an ID, uh, title, contents, and maybe a date or created. Um, if you know GraphQL, you might notice that there's some annotations here, these app model. This is something that Amplify understands and uses that to actually generate model-specific code. So it knows that that's going to be treated as a model in your app. And you'll actually get database tables created from this. So I'm going to hit Save. Go back to the tool, and now I've got a API push queued up. We can see that here in the status. And if I go and push that, um, this, is, this takes a little bit of time. Uh, but this is going to go and generate uh, all those, all those uh, backend tables and everything. It's also going to ask me if I want to generate code for it. Um, so I'm going to say yes. I want to gen generate Angular service. Uh, I want to generate all the possible operations, queries, mutations, subscriptions, you name it. Um, and I'm going to give it a, a file name. So while that's running, I have a version of this file that gets generated that I, that I can walk you through here, uh, because this is going to take, take a, a little bit of time. OK. So this api.service.ts is auto-generated from Amplify when we push a new API and tell it to generate code. And uh, the amount of work that doing these types of operations usually takes is pretty significant. But in here, what we have is essentially a simple TypeScript service that we can import into Angular that comes with all the different input and output types, all typed out based on my schema. Um, we've got create, read, update, delete types, uh, filtering types. Um, mutation types, <clears throat> uh, 
tons of different types, query types, list types. And we can use these types in our code to kind of treat the, this data that we send and receive back from the API as essentially objects in our code. So this is where things get interesting in here. We see that we have this um, service that's been generated. Uh, and one of these function here, functions here is create person. So create person is going to take an input of the create person input type, which has my name, maybe my email, job title, profile image. And it's going to make this GraphQL statement or send this GraphQL statement to the server. So uh, if you're like me and you don't really know GraphQL all that well, I look at this and I'm like very happy that I didn't have to write any of it myself. Uh, just give me my method. I'll send you the fields that you expect and you do all the work. So I, I really, really like this. Um, and it's kind of, it creates a nice abstraction over your back end. So this might change, who knows? If this changes in the future, all you need to worry about is you're calling create person with the right data uh, and everything should work correctly. So let's hope that finished. Okay, good, that finished. Uh, we'll just take a look at our code here. We can see that we have we should have the API service generated for us in here. So basically exactly what I showed you, that's been generated in our actual project and we uh, will be importing it and using it. Okay, so now let's just go and make sure I've got all those things imported. Okay, so we're gonna import the API service that I just created. And then we are going to update the people page to list all the people in our database. I'll walk through some of this once I just get it in here. Just wanna make sure it works. Okay. And then one other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new component that presents a modal to the user to let them create a person. Uh, so you can press a button in the upper right to add a person, it's gonna pop up in a modal. We'll be able to enter some fields and actually create uh, the person entry. So let's call this create person modal. I think that's what I've got it here, person create modal. That's gonna generate us a simple component, an Angular component. So we get a template, we get um, a SAS file to style it, we get a uh, testing, um, we get unit tests here, and then we get a TypeScript file for logic. So uh, I have a modal pre-made here that uses, um, uses ionic controls to basically make a toolbar, some buttons in the top, and then uh, a list to actually enter some data for the user. And then on the actual modal logic, um, we will let the user enter data, and then we'll, when the modal dismisses, that data will return back to our page. So hopefully this worked. Just gonna do one thing. Okay, that's just compiling quick. Okay, let's just make it make sure it works first and then I'll walk through the code. So let's hit plus up here. We get a modal window prompting us for some data. Um, I'm gonna enter my data, I'm gonna hit save. And we should have, all right. So that went and created um, a new entry for me in the database and then loaded that data back. So let's go take a look at how that works. Let's open the people page. So in here, um, I'm just gonna assume that you're somewhat familiar with Angular. Uh, we have a uh, ion list here, and then a ng4 that loops through every, uh, every person in people.items, and then outputs a ion avatar, which is what we built. We built this prototype already. The ion avatar and then uh, the uh, uh, person's name and then their job title. 
So in the code itself, all we had to do to actually get this data uh, is have one single call to our API service. So in here, when the, when the page loads, we call ngon init, and then we call load people. And this calls our API service dot list persons. So this is going to do a, essentially returns a promise. Uh, we're going to wait for the result. And then we will have a list of people in an items array. Um, so if we take a look at the API service, I just want to see what that's doing. Um, list persons. <clears throat> okay, so we can see we've got this method here, which takes a number of arguments. We could do some filtering. We can do limit requests. We uh, could do pagination. Uh, so this has all been generated for us, and this query is going to go run this list person statement um, and get us back a list of people in our database. And so all we have to do is just call list persons and it works. So on the create side, it's, it's pretty much very similar, uh, almost identical. So when we get the, the response back from the modal window, we will get a, essentially a person input object. So uh, let's take a look at that. We've imported this create person input type from our service. So we can use that auto-generated code in our project. And as long as we keep this, the GraphQL schema up to date, those objects will, be, will map to what our schema is. So uh, we're able to use the input type. Uh, and then when you enter the data, we just send the data back and then call this.apiservice.createPerson. We wait for the response, and then we reload the people. Um, there's probably a better, more efficient way to do this, but it's simple for this use case. And then we file a, um, or, or track a analytics event down here using the analytics API. So um, I just want to hammer home this point. Like what I, what I really, really love about this uh, Amplify and, and having it in this tool, um, all you need to do is really import the service and you get all those sub services that you created kind of out of the box for free. Okay, so um, I want to sh talk about the hosting feature as well. So every Ionic app is basically a web app that uh, has controls that make it look and feel native on different platforms. And so because it's based on the web, it can run anywhere the web runs, including as a progressive web app. So if we want to take our app and push it to, um, push it to, an S3 bucket and host it on the web, we can go and click Add Hosting, set up what our index uh, document is going to be, our error document, and we can run Publish. So we go back to the tool so we can see that we've got queued up here, we've got a uh, hosting change. Um, so we're going to go to the Hosting tab and hit Publish. So Publish is going to go and do a production build of my app, uh, and that takes a little bit of time. It's, it's doing an Angular AOT build, so it's optimized and everything like that. And then it's going to take those built assets and then deploy them to uh, the S3 bucket. And I'm going to get a URL back that's ready to go, that's ready to be hosted. My understanding is there's some new uh, hosting features in the console, so check out the Amplify console update. Uh, it's probably it definitely supersedes this. So, um, but anyways, pushing up to a bucket is 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 pretty easy. This tends to take a little bit of time, uh, so probably not going to show the finished product. Um, so, uh, a few other features that we're really excited about in Studio, uh, we have a bunch of configuration options for managing uh, just thorny issues in in mobile development. So. Uh, adding different platforms. So if you want to support iOS and Android, you can, you can go to the platforms section in your configuration, click add, they get added to your project, installed, everything like that. And we, we, we will also tell you when there's updates available, like your platform's out of date, you'll get an update notification here, and then you can click install the update, and you should be updated. So this has been a problem for developers as they're using an old version of a platform, they don't realize it, and so this should help them do that. Uh, similarly, you can add various native plugins in here. So if you want to add different like 
you know, you want to track secure storage, uh, access Bluetooth, um, Google Maps. You can do that all right from here. Uh, managing icon and splash screen always tends to be a little bit of, of a uh, annoying thing to have to do. All you need to do here is pick a uh, large enough template image, and we will auto-generate all the different app icons you need, all the different splash screen sizes you need. Uh, and if you've, if you've used Ionic's resource tool in the past, this is all client side. So it's much faster, and it's uh, uh, guaranteed to always be up and running. So uh, really excited about that feature. Uh, I mentioned integrations. Uh, if you have any issues with your project, you can click a button to repair the project, and this will try to reset it back to a stable place. And this is really important for native, native development if you're targeting iOS and Android. Sometimes things just get out of whack. They, you know, it happens even if you're writing plain native apps. So this tries to kind of get you back to a normal state. And then finally, I showed most of the features here, but the other one that I'm really excited about is the assets tool. So uh, when you build an app, chances are you're going to have images, you're going to have icons, sound, video, whatever. And it's, it's kind of diff difficult to know where in your um, files you should place some of those things. So the asset tool basically gives you a uh, simple place to put those assets. And then you can easily select them in the um, designer tool. If I go and say add an image, drag an image in, and I can choose from my assets what image I want to use. And so I don't need to worry about, do I have the right path? Is it going to work when I actually push it to the device? Uh, we handle all of that for you. So I could choose this icon and, and select it right there. So um, that's a feature I'm really excited about. Uh, it's kind of simple, but will help uh, manage assets. And let's see if this S3 upload finished. So we're uploading files. I don't know if we're going to get to that, but um, I am finished a little bit early. That was the extent of my demo. Uh, we're going to be rolling out Studio uh, over the next uh, month or so. So if you want to check it out, go to the site, register for a demo. Uh, it's not quite ready yet for, uh, for mass rollout, but uh, it should be soon. And I want to thank the AWS team, the Amplify team, for inviting me here, for having us up here, and being awesome partners. Uh, we look forward to doing a lot more with, with your team and with Amplify. Um, and I think, you know, I'm hoping that people will try out the Amplify integration and, and uh, get kind of that same like wow moment that I had when I was uh, using this. So uh, we have a little bit of time left for questions. If anyone wants to ask any questions, um, I think we can do that, right? Yeah. Um, good question. I think it depends what, like, it's, it's, if you're not using Ionic and you're trying to import an existing, like, native app in, it's probably not going to be all that valuable to you. Um, but if you do have an existing Ionic app and you're using Ionic 4, this is based on the new version, then you could import it and start working on it right away. And, and you can work with uh, uh, developers who maybe are using their own tools, like, they have their own text editor, like, I use Vim, for example, and, like, I always want to use Vim. <laughs> so, but you can work with other developers who are using different tools. Um, yeah, potentially it just depends what technology it's based on. Like this uses Ionic for all the UI, so if you're not using Ionic for the UI, then it won't really do much for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So there's a basic, um, the question is what kind of NPM integrations we have. So we have some basic stuff for managing like NPM install, uh, doing a fresh NPM install if you want to like blow out your uh, settings and start over. Sorry, somebody's making noise over here, distracting me. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you, so we do have some basic functionality for that, but we're probably going to be doing more. Like showing you, hey, there's a package that has an update, which 
you know, was important this week if you're paying attention to the no drama. Um, so hopefully it can help with some of that. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I can answer the Amplify question. I think, as far as I understand, all the APIs for what this form is doing are available in the tool. So you could, you know, send the actual like login request yourself, email, password, things like that. And then in here, you could just build out like the form yourself, or you could write the code, whatever you want to do. So Amplify both has the pre-made stuff and then the low-level APIs that you can use yourself. Yeah. Um, so Amplify has that baked in as far as I understand. So you, you, uh, we might not be exposing it yet in the tool, but that is, uh, that is a big feature. I think even there's some stuff that rolled out. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, any other questions? I probably have one more time for one more. That is not our, we're not trying to solve that problem. <laughs> That's because it, it looks like it's creating a lot of stuff, like yeah. including lambdas. Yeah, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask about that. I just like spending the money. All right. Yeah, last question. Um, we never use Bootstrap, okay. so I don't know. <laughs> At least I don't remember that. All right, everyone, thank you so much for having me.